Hi, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm joined by Demis Rosley. It's so great to have you here. We're going to get stuck into it in just one second. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. We'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Demis, this is the first time we've had you on all year. It's so great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. And yeah, it has been a long time, actually. It's yeah, we're like, doing it. How long has it been? Months. Months, <laughs> easily months. And I just have flashbacks. Like, I, I, do you remember when we were about to do a live stream? We were talking for about 10 minutes and YouTube crashed. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? I just yeah. have flashbacks yeah, because yeah. I had a couple of like yeah, technical yeah, yeah. things, like just as we were getting things set up. And I was like, oh, no, not again. Not again with Demis. Um, but hey, we made it. Uh, pray to the YouTube gods that uh, we get through it. Um, what's up, everybody in chat? We're using Behance for chat today. So if you're over on YouTube, jump over there, come say hi, let us know where you're from. Um, we've already seen that Jim is saying he's from Western Kentucky. He loves the tram picture. Oh, That's wow. so awesome. Um, <laughs> got Festus in the house, uh, Jose, um, Olenloa. I hope I'm saying, pronouncing that correctly. Great to have you here as well. I know Sam was here before, R&B is here, Jill's here. It's great to have you all here. Um, please uh, let us know if you have any questions as we're going along. Bit of a kind of freestyle session today with Demis. It is part one of a two-part series and we're talking about mobile photography right like the best yeah. camera the best camera you have is the best camera is the one you have right and we're all carrying have you, cameras have around you done much um, mobile photography stuff on adobe live no we haven't we don't cover it that oh. much um which is why I, I like i know you're a bit of an expert in it you know i know you do a lot of work with samsung um so you've got like you've got like a decked out um phone <laughs> camera which i do think helps but at the same time <laughs> we were chatting about like what what could we do like there's like I take terrible phone photos. Um, and so this is just totally my selfish, like, hey man, help me take better photos of my kid at the park. Uh, that's what this live stream's all about. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, I've been doing work with Samsung for a bit now and I think it doesn't matter what camera you use or have, it's just mm. like how you utilize it and yeah, it's whatever camera you have, even if it's the one in your pocket, it's completely fine. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's get let's get some music started. If if um, since it has been a while, should we have a look at maybe your Instagram or another platform first? Um, sure. Let's jump over to your computer. All right, here we go. So sure. so yes, is your Instagram? It is. So I guess if people don't know who I am, I'm a photographer and designer based in Sydney, Australia. Um, I do a lot of uh, architecture photography and urban photography. Um, but I mean, just any type of photography I like to do. Um, lately I've been kind of, I know, because we've all just like been stuck at home and not really been able to do too much or travel too much, uh, which I used to do pre pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been kind of just repurposing a lot of my older content, um, to like make lots of like, you know, TikTok videos or, um, reels that, you know, have fun, have, have a lot of fun. So this is like just using some of my old photos and turning them into like album covers. Right. Um, and just reminding me of traveling to Japan, which is always fun and awesome. Mm. Um, but yeah, these are just like proving a point that like anything can be an album cover, but like, it. I mean, it's just like funny videos that I've taken in the past. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just like, what is this one? There's also another album cover one. Um, I did uh, a movie poster one, even though I wrote fake album covers here because I've been doing too many album cover ones. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's like a f fake movie poster one. So from the edits I've done in the past. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, been just posting a lot on Instagram, uh, TikTok, and probably YouTube lately as well. Yeah. So like, there's my TikTok account. I don't know if people want to see. Um, and then, yeah, YouTube where... My last video was actually talking about five ways to make to take better mobile photos. So, right. I guess this is sort of like 
a continuation to it or just like an expansion to it as well. So I'll, I'll cover yeah. the tips I talk about in that video, but uh, we'll expand on it and, and um, show you guys how I edit some of the photos as well. Yeah, great. I really love the idea of repurposing like content that you have, like, cause you, you guys were traveling like a lot of, a lot of your friends as well. Like your entire Instagram feed was just like FOMO. It's just like, yeah, here, here we are. <laughs> like here we are in LA, like here we are in Japan, like all these amazing, and obviously the photography was incredible. Um, but I think that's a really good, yeah, really good solution to like being, you know, being locked down and unable to travel and all that sort of stuff. And I wonder if anyone in chat has done anything similar, like revisiting old projects because because you can't get out. Let it, let us know. Yeah, I realized that like, you know, once you start looking into all my old photos, there's actually like so many that I've never posted or even looked at yet. Like, right. I, I mean, I probably skimmed over it, but like when you really look at the photos again, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then you kind of just like start editing them. And then um, recently I also like, not recently, actually, like I've been posting carousels, like every post on Instagram, I always do a carousel to just show like a more, more of a story behind the place or the location and, yeah. and whatnot. So um, I get, we're gonna be talking about that today in the editing as well, but um, yeah. So I find the carousel is always nice. And so I can always like bring out a photo I've never posted yet. And then in, inside the carousel, it could be one of the photos I already posted in the past, for example. Yeah. 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 So I think that's great. Like, and so like, obviously you keep like, do you keep every photo you've ever taken? Like, do you ever go through and delete yeah. photos or you just keep everything? I, I never delete anything. Yeah. So Even that's coming, like, that's coming handy. <laughs> sometimes I just like, I've accidentally pressed the shutter button or something and then I just keep it like just in case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Man. That's a great, that's a great solution. I like it. Yeah. So should we start talking about some mobile photography? Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Where, where do, where do we begin? Um, so in that video, um, the first thing I think is just like before you even take any photos, yeah. uh, I would always try to like just wipe the camera. So like your phone is, I guess, always in your pocket or in your right. bag. So I was trying to just like wipe it on my shirt or even like use a microfiber cloth to just clean the lens <laughs> a little bit because yeah. it's going to be dusty. Maybe, maybe it improves the sharpness of your image. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, so that's the first thing I would always do. Man, I love that because that, for, that like right out of the gate, that's something I've never done. <laughs> I've, never <laughs> thought of, I've never thought of that because there's so much junk in my pockets. That's such a great, that's such a great idea. I like it. Let's yeah. go. Let's roll. <laughs> and then the next thing I would do is I kind of just tweak the settings on your camera. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, for example, turning on your rule of thirds, grid lines, um, mm -hmm. making sure that uh, you're shooting in four by three. So your camera, uh, sensor is a, usually a four by three sensor. So like if you're shooting like full screen, which is like nine by 16 or something, it's mm. usually like just a like cropped version of your four by three. Oh, okay. So if you're shooting four by three, then uh, you get the, the biggest resolution the camera can give kind of thing. Right, makes sense. Um, so that's another one. And then also if you can, uh, you try to shoot in raw if your phone can do it. Uh, but if not, that's fine as well. Like today we're gonna be editing just JPEG photos from uh, from my phone that I just took two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you can switch on raw, um, in, on a Samsung phone, I think in all, a lot of other phones, there's also like this thing called pro mode, which means you can control your settings. So like you can control your shutter speed, you can control your ISO, but a lot of phones, you can't control your aperture. It's just a locked aperture. So it's kind of easier than a normal camera because you only need to control two settings rather than three. Yeah. Um, so once you like lock your ISO to like a, re a low number, you can just play with the shutter speed until you get the right exposure pretty much. Mm, cool. Um, so yeah. And so usually in that pro mode, you can shoot raw. Um, and yeah, raw is always good because then you can have more data and flexibility when you're editing because then you can bring out more colors, more shadows, more highlights, mm. um, etc. Nice. Um, yeah. So then the next tip, which kind of leads on to what we're going to be editing is um, try to use like the, all the cameras on your phone. So like uh, use the ultra wide, use the standard, use the telephoto. So try, like mm. from one spot, try to use all the cameras and don't just like be thinking about one camera kind of thing. Right. So like a challenge I set for myself sometimes when I'm just like, what, what cool shots or like what, how can I get my creative juices a little bit flowing when I'm shooting is I would just stand in one spot and then try to take a cool photo using the ultra wide until I get one really cool one. Mm. And then I would switch to the next one and then I won't move my feet. Like I'll just stay in one spot 
Um, but you could like turn around, you can look up, you can look down, you can go low. But like, yeah. just try to look for different angles, but use all the different cameras. So once you start doing the telephoto, it's like something completely different, right? You don't usually shoot in telephoto um, on your phone, and so like you start looking for details and like uh, this these windows. Like if you go close up, it might look really cool. You know, find cool patterns from it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of a challenge I like to do, which kind of link leads to um, what we're going to be editing in Lightroom today. Cool. Um, I like it. So yeah, so if we go into Lightroom, so uh, this is not the the beach photo here is not taken on my phone. It's just a random photo. Um, yeah. But I'd be worried for your <laughs> safety if you took that on your phone. So is that like your photo? Is that like a drone or something? Or yeah, it's a photo I took in Hawaii oh. um, using a drone. Um, yeah, so when, when after I uh, go home and get all the photos done, I would usually just plug my phone to my computer, copy all the photos onto a folder, um, and then I would bring it into Lightroom Classic. So in this live stream today, we're going to be talking about Lightroom Classic, but on Thursday, we're going to be talking about that tram photo that you guys saw at the beginning mm -hmm. in, the, in the, what is it, the, the flyer? Yeah. Um, and then uh, we're going to go through like from mobile, Lightroom mobile to Lightroom on the computer to Photoshop. So it's like a, a whole workflow and uh, how that works. Yeah. But today we're doing um, Lightroom Classic and how I would edit like a set of photos or a carousel. Um, cool. So once you've got your photos uh, loaded into the computer, you just have to go to Lightroom and go file import. Um, and then you just find your folder pretty much, which is this one for me. So the way I usually import photos, I don't know, I think maybe it's a bit different to lots of people because a lot of people just, I guess, uh, import everything onto from the, from the camera roll, right? Like mm -hmm. they would just leave all these photos checked and import everything. Um, but what I like to do is just I, I uncheck and I only import the ones I actually like. Right. Uh, the reason because I do this is I don't know, I just don't want my Lightroom catalog to be cluttered full of images that I maybe won't edit or like mm. it just gets too cluttered. But I guess there are ways to sort that out as well by doing like, you know, five star, uh, five star ratings and four star ratings, etc. Yeah. Um, but I just like to keep it clean and just like only import the photos I want to edit, I guess. Yeah. So it's like um, your way of like shortlisting, right? Like you kind of just at first impression. Yeah. Yeah, that one, maybe that one or... Yeah, so like I just use the arrow key left and right to just pick through what photos I like. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on, for example, if I find, oh, I need another photo, I just import another one in. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is like, I guess this is my way of doing it. I don't know. Maybe it's wrong. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, but that's, I just did like, <laughs> that's like, that's part of our live stream bingo, which is, which is an artist coming on saying, that's just the way I do it. Like there's other ways to yeah. do it. You find your own, find your own bliss, man. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's what we're here to learn. We're here to learn. We're here to learn your way. <laughs> so, um, looking just looking through all this, um, we're gonna pick one photo using the ultra wide, one photo using the standard, and then because my, my phone currently has two telephoto lenses, so I'm gonna pick one uh, using my three times zoom and one using the ten times zoom, so that we can edit all four and come up with like a carousel post for Instagram, I guess. Cool. Um, so I am looking at all this, I think the ultra wide shots are like these ones. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I would just go through it one by one. And then I guess like, let's say like, what's the difference between this one and this one, for example, like mm. the skies exposed a bit better here and my wife's standing, I guess in a, in a nicer pose. So I think I'll pick this one. Yep. And if you want to pick it, I just press the P button. And if you want to unselect it, you just press U. So P and U um, toggles this uh, this check mark. Right. Um, and then yeah, just keep going. Uh, I think. Hey, we got a question these... from chat while oh, we yeah. while selecting yeah. these. Um, so Steve says this is really interesting architecture. Is this in Sydney? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where is this? Yes, this is um, on George Street. It's a new building by uh, FJMT, which is the office I used to work for. Funnily <laughs> enough, um, if you guys didn't know, I used to work in an architecture firm, and I quit during the pandemic last year. Um, and yeah, and this wasn't uh, completed. This wasn't complete yet when I quit, but it just got completed this year. And so I went to check it out and take some photos. Yeah, it's nice. um, on George Street across the street from uh, Louis Vuitton. 
Right. If you know where that is. Mm -hmm. uh, corner of King and George. Corner of King and George. There we go. Yeah. Nice. Did you work on this um, one at all? No, I didn't. But I did see it like as a construction site. Like, it's, yeah. it's just across the street from our office. We Our office is literally like oh, wow. in that Louis Vuitton building. <laughs> so we would watch it. Yeah. It's convenient. There was at a point, it was a really windy day. And then the, the crane was like swaying. It was mm -hmm. so strange. Like. Mm. We were look, staring at the crane from across the street and it's just swaying so hard and we were like, oh my god, what is this? What's going to happen with this crane? It's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so next I'm going to look for a shot I took using the standard um, camera, which I think... Um, I think I like these ones here. So I think I like... Let's go with this one. Pick that one. Uh, then for the three times zoom, I tried to frame the center point tower through one of these holes. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to use this as um, one of the images. So I think maybe this one is probably nice because it's more centered um, compared to this one. It's, it's a bit off center. Um, and then for the 10 times zoom, I went like really detailed and started looking into like these textures and yeah, it's really um, nice. Yeah, just like looking at the, the materiality of the building, right? Like there's wood, there's nice metal and glass. So it's like a how the materials interact with each other. Mm. Um, so I think I'll I think I like maybe this one. So let's pick that one. Um, and then once you got your photos, I just click import and let it load. Nice. Have we just got some so more? Then, um, just jumping into some of the comments. Um, sure. Yeah. So. Uh, Herbert says, very nice. Um, Abby says, who says mobile phones are not pro cameras? Um, <laughs> uh, Steve's saying, still get great shots from my iPhone 6S. Yeah, that was my last phone. Like, it's not it's not that yeah. bad. Like, it's amazing how far cameras yeah. have come. Obviously, what Demis is talking about, like having multiple telephoto lens in your pocket is pretty wild, but it's incredible what you can get out of, like, you know, some of the kind of standard, standard phones these days. Mm, for sure. I mean, even if there's only just one camera, there's, you can still do so much. Like, yeah. I think three cameras and stuff was only introduced maybe last year or two years ago or something. But yeah. like, if, if you have a previous, like an older model, like you can still do a lot. Cause I even used to shoot on those phones as well back then, right? Like, like yeah. it's just a continuation of like, an, you know, a, addition to it, I guess. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, Hey, one more question. Would you ever, um, Jose's asking, would you ever do a walk with Demis workshop? That would be I fun. I would love to. I mean, <laughs> we we used to do a lot of them. Like um, Samsung actually used to run a lot of them. It's called Samsung Sessions. Yeah. Where like uh, we used to, during like Vivid, we hosted workshops like at Luna Park and we would just walk around Luna Park. Mm. Um, taking photos at night and showing the capabilities of the phone, I guess. And like, we would uh, learn everyone a mini tripod and everyone's shooting like the Ferris wheel. It was just like kind of fun. Yeah, that's um, cool. And I guess because of the pandemic, they had to stop that yeah. um, for a while. So hopefully we can bring it back um, if, if you guys in Sydney. And yeah, I would love to do more of them and, and meet people, I guess. And we haven't really met people in a while. So that's right. meeting people should be good. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be good. Good and healthy for everybody. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's just start with editing the first picture, which is this ultra wide shot. Cool. Um, for me, you just start off by going to the develop tab. Um, I don't usually, um, I don't usually like use presets or anything. So I usually just like um, edit from scratch pretty much. Um, and if you're editing a set, then I would start with one and then I would copy the, the settings to the, all the other ones and then see how we go from there. Okay, cool. Because um, so you shot them in I'm the just... same same light, like same kind of yeah. you know, camera processor and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and then I also like to open uh, photos in reference view as well so that you could uh, look at it and like match the colors and make sure you got the right kind of uh, matching. But we'll go, we'll go through that soon. Okay, cool. Um, so... Yeah, just to begin with, I would usually start by cropping the photo because um, on Instagram, it's usually four by five ratio. Mm -hmm. So I would go here and pick four by five and then you can toggle using O different um, guidelines. Yeah. So I, I always like to use like, for example, this one to make sure the horizon line is straight and make sure the subject is centered, for example. 
um, and just like, and then using changing it to like the rule of thirds guidelines, and then just like picking a good composition for it, like where are the points intersecting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, like, are you worried too much? Are you worried a lot about when you take the original photo about trying to keep it level and straight? Like, are you looking at like a vertical or the, or the horizon line and using that as your frame of reference, or are you not worrying about that so much because you're going to fix it in post? I, I know I can fix it in post, but I think it's still better if you can get a straight photo in camera. Yeah. Um, and that's also a reason why you should turn on your rule of thirds guidelines on your phone so that it can help you. Mm -hmm. um, when you're shooting, but yeah, so like here, I'm just like rotating it very, very slightly and trying to get it straight. Um, but yeah, so I guess this for me is a good crop. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. That's cool. um, and then I would just, yeah, go through each kind of slider one by one and just like move them left and right and see if I like it this way or that way. And then just like, like try to do it like instinctively, like, Mm. Don't think about it too much. Just like, oh, I like this. And then just move on to the next one kind of thing. Right. Um, so, like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, just going to brighten this, for example, using the exposure. Um, add a bit of contrast. to just like make the image pop out a little bit more. Um, but this is just like, I guess, my preference of how I edit, right? So everyone has their own preference. So this is completely subjective and up to you. And, yeah, like I'm just literally moving each slider. Like, you know, shadows, I would like to make it a little bit more darker so just like give it more like give more emphasis onto the blacks of the image and also the blacks as well i'll well, probably make it a bit darker mm. just make the image pop out a bit more um but yeah essentially like this is like all photo editing is right like all color grading is just like mm. moving sliders left and right <laughs> until you find the right combination that you like for yourself and i guess for me i've kind of developed my style, my, the way I like to edit throughout, like, I don't know, maybe five, six years now. Mm. Um, and so like, I kind of already know if I'm going to push this slider left or right, or like what might look good here, or might look good there. So it's all about just like practicing and like, um, you know, repetition and, um, up to you, right? Like what you want to, what, what you like and up to you to find out what you like as well. So the more yeah. you shoot, the more you edit, the more you can find out what you like. Cool. Um, yeah, and in terms, like here in the HSL panel, I'm just gonna slide. I think I'm gonna bring out the, the oranges because it's kind of like what the architecture is. It's like all like sandstone, wood. So I'm gonna try to bring out that a little bit more in terms of the colors and the yellows as well. Mm. Um, so just accentuating what was already given to me by the location. Um, I love that. Accentuating what was already giving me, given to me by the location. Yeah. <laughs> so the light and the yeah, shadows and everything you've originally captured, you're really just kind of tweaking it, like nudging it a little bit one way or the other rather than necessarily fully yeah. officially bringing, bringing things in. So like, I guess there's not two, but there's like, in, in terms of my editing style, there's like a, a, a range, right? So like there's this style where it's literally, I already love the photo to begin with. So I don't really need to do too much and I don't really need to like uh, go crazy on Photoshop or like, uh, you know, get rid of people or blur this, blur that. Yeah. Um, this is more just like a straight up, I love this photo. I'm just going to color grade it and essentially make it brighter, make the colors pop, um, make the tones a bit cooler because I prefer like cooler tones, I guess, myself. Mm -hmm. um, I also like... Uh, like aqua and teal colors so like i always make my, my blues i push my blues a little bit more towards the aqua side um but it's just like again another personal preference thing if mm. you like purples then you should you know push the colors to purple or whatnot yeah um so essentially right like yeah so now like if this we're just we're not completely done yet but if you press the backslash button you can see the before and after it's like it's not too crazy but you can see just that it's difference, big difference. Of, yeah so it just brightens it up and like you know puts more emphasis on the subject and the location as well mm. um if you want later on you could also like bring more emphasis to the subject by just like adding like a radial filter which is just like editing this little part for example or painting it or if you want to accentuate the architecture you can just edit the outside part for example as well mm. um but like even so, yeah, it's not nothing like too crazy. It's just like 
changing colors and like changing the tones and uh, finding out what you like in terms of colors and tones as well. Yeah. Um, for me, I actually like this process. Like, if you press, the reason why I don't like to use presets when I edit is because, um, like, when you press a preset, there's always already like a preconceived like thing that just pops up in front of you. That's mm. not like a process of how you get there. Yeah. And so, I usually find it harder to go back and fix sometimes. Mm. It's like, oh, uh, do I actually like it? Like, and then I end up just like editing it from scratch again. It's like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like. Mm. Um, yeah, but I just, for me, I, I like this process a bit because it's like you searching for the colors and you actually looking for like, you know, what is best for this specific image, for example, yeah. or this specific location. Um, because, you know, a preset's not going to work on every single photo, for example. Yeah, I can, um, I can understand that. I, I, I can see that. And I think like also for us to, to learn more and just get you know, into the into the flow and feeling of what each thing will do to different images. It's obviously very important to to spend the time, I guess, like going through and yeah. changing them yourself. Yeah, for sure. So, like, I usually add like a tiny bit of noise reduction, reduction, and I sharpen the image a little bit like this, um, and then that's kind of it. Like, maybe add a little bit of vignetting just to like bring the sub, uh, bring more focus to the subject. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so like. This is, I guess, maybe I'll maybe because of the vignette, it's gotten a little bit dark. So I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think like I like this. Maybe it's not fully straight, so I'm just going to straighten it a little bit more. Yeah. Also, like random stuff like this, like the text getting cut off on the side. I could um, spot removal it maybe, and let's see if it works in Lightroom, maybe it won't. But if it doesn't work in Lightroom, you can always just jump into Photoshop and quickly remove that. Oh, that did a good job. That did fine. So that works and yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so let's try now like editing all the other ones. So like this one, this one, and right. this one. Cool. So if you if um, you've just so, if, if you've just joined us, so so Demis has Demis took these photos himself with his camera, but with different lenses, um, and we're going through and basically he's, you know edited edited all the sliders in Lightroom Classic on this one particular image. And now, if I understand correctly, we're going to try to apply this as a, it's a bit of a shortcut, right? You're like, cool, I've done this first yeah. one. I'm going to apply it to a couple of others and then see if it works and work from there. Yeah. So I just usually open the second image and then I press. Shift R on my keyboard to open reference view. So it opens like it's kind of split screen it, and then I drag the photo that I already edited into the first one. Mm -hmm. So it just becomes like a little reference angle just to check if your colors are going to be you know right or not. Um, I would go back to the first one, uh, and then I would copy it. So here down here, there's copy. Um, probably turn off the crop because the crop's going to be different. Uh, maybe turn off. What else I think you want to turn off the spot removal top right yeah, as well. Yeah, the local adjustments and spot removal. Um, and then sometimes transform as well because you want sometimes I've straightened a photo or whatnot. Right. So I just need, I think that's that's it. Um, then you copy it, you go to the next image and then you paste and see what happens. So that's kind of a little bit better already, but I would also still probably increase the brightness and just like push it up a little bit more. Mm. So now it kind of matches a bit better. Um, and it's literally as simple as that, right? It's like one button <laughs> and then increasing exposure. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. And then I would crop it to four by five, just like I would um, for the other photo because it's going to be on Instagram. And then, yeah, we're going to be posting it as a carousel on my feed. Is that a is that a permanent crop in Lightroom? Like if you wanted to go yeah. back into Lightroom and then export it as without the crop or is that just or does that just hard crop the original? It crops the original, but then like if you want without the crop, I would like right click it and go create a virtual copy. Yeah. Um, and so if I do this now, uh, it makes a second copy of the same file. Cool. And then you could uh, reset your crop from there. Nice. And then you have a, the same thing. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just going to crop this to 
something like this and use the rule of thirds just to check everything's kind of nice. Can you, can you explain the, the rule of framework? thirds for photography just in case um, people haven't heard of it or don't know about it or just kind of want to get your perspective on it? Um, I guess it's just a guideline, right? Like it's not like a definitive rule of how you should take photos or whatnot. Um, right. But usually um, the horizontal bottom one is nice for like the horizon, for example, or, or even mm -hmm. the horizontal top one. Like it's just like, I think our brain works uh, when looking at something that's supposed to be like aesthetically pleasing in like threes and like yeah and a, a grid of three like horizontally and vertically mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if you split try to split your images into three quadrants vertically and horizontally where is it quadrants usually a four so it's not quadrants it's a different word we could say segments, um, <laughs> segments yes, works. three segments <laughs> um, then usually people say it, you get a more like aesthetically pleasing image or the composition is better for example um that's subjective because you know like people might think something else is better so it doesn't but i mean it's just a general rule um you would like you would try to position things like in that intersection the points of intersection yeah where these four corners are meeting um just yeah um that's just how i like to compose my images yeah I like um it. Yeah, and then yeah, going back to the reference view. So now we got your uh, first image, and now you got the second image. Um, I could even increase the brightness a little bit more on the second image, I think, mm. just to match it. Um, but you don't need to do too much. Like after you, it's probably just like this top basic. Is it called the basic slide? Yeah, the basic sliders um, that you need to adjust. But yeah, so I guess. I'm happy with that second image. Um, then I would just keep going. So the third image is this third one I took on the three times telephoto lens. Again, I'm just going to paste it because we've already copied it. So paste and see what happens. Um, it's still a bit dark again, so I'm going to push the brightness up and try to match it a bit and highlights down so that the center point tower doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. um, Again, we're going to crop it to four by five. So getting that There's center point like, tower to like, um, I, I getting it all correct so that also the center point tower comes out might be quite difficult in Lightroom. If you're looking at this, would you ever think I might have to end up cutting that out essentially in Photoshop, putting it on another layer or would you, or do you think you could achieve it all in Lightroom, just all one layer? Um, it depends, right? Like I think if you shoot raw, you could probably bring it out better. Yeah. Um, if you, I, this is a JPEG image. I think it's okay. Like I just wanted, for me, I just wanted like a subtle thing inside. Right. Like I don't want it to. Um, I just want to see to get people to look in the center and there's something there. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess in Sydney, the center point tower is recognizable enough to the point where like, you know that's a center point tower. Right. Um, so for me, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, like that uh, and you can even bring the highlights down even more to to bring you know to bring the tower back out which yeah. I kind of like actually um, so yeah so something like that and yeah if you were shooting raw you could definitely bring it out a lot more mm. um, I'm also gonna try so there's this smudge here which is kind of annoying me um, I'm gonna try using the spot removal tool and if it doesn't work we will go to Photoshop and get rid of it Ah, huh, that's again not bad. That's fine. It's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it's it was like, the Australian flag for a second there. I don't know. I, that I smudge. Thought, yeah, I thought the smudge was the Australian flag, but no, it's well, not. I think it's just like a little <laughs> plastic bag that's just like landed on the on the oh, roof. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, that's a, that's yeah, a pretty, that, like, pretty good job. Wow. That's a massive difference, right? Like mm. this is full shadow, full dark, and once you copy the settings over, it's like matched it really really nicely mm -hmm. great um having the side by yeah, side again, is so useful like that's such an inc like yeah it's, it's like necessary to be able to do this i think yeah i actually only like found out that this reference view like recently and i'm yeah. like where what have i been doing recently but i guess it's only because i've started using like doing carousel posts so that like i wanted to find a way to make it easier for myself to edit lots of yeah. photos and try to match it um, but yeah, this reference view is great. The only downside is that 
once you press the crop button, it takes you out of it. Right. So you can't crop and see the other one at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you just have to crop and then you bring it back up to by going back. shift R again. Um, I think it's also hidden here as well. You go view, um, open in reference view. So that's the, if you don't want to do the short keyboard shortcut, you can find it there. Nice. Um, yeah. And then now just go to the last image, which is this 10 times zoom image. Um, again, we're going to paste it. That's again, done an okay job already. And then I'm going to crop it again. Uh, maybe this one, I'll get rid of this sprinkler. So I just crop it in a bit more. And then, yeah, using the, like see here, like you, this rule of thirds guideline at the bottom, I've kind of, I'm kind of using it as a guide um, mm. with this white kind of beam. Yeah. So that it's kind of, it's kind of within that image and it's giving that image a bit more balance, I think for me, in my opinion. Mm. Um, yeah, so just like splitting the image into three parts, right? Like, which is this part here, this middle part here, and the top part. So that's sort of how I usually would compose an image. Um, again, nice. shift R and see like how we can edit this. This one, maybe, uh, we want it a bit more yellow. So bring out the temperature. But yeah, it's like, how long did that take me? That took me like five, 10 minutes to edit four photos. Yeah. It wasn't too long. And it's like, you get a carousel post on your feed, which is like showing a lot more of a location. And um, yeah, it just like adds more dimension to your imagery as well. It tells more of a story, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally, like you can show the atmosphere, you can show the 3D space because there's multiple angles and, you know, different, you know, focus points and things like that. Yeah, it's super useful. Yeah, you can see it show the material, you can show the textures of a place. Um, I guess if you're shooting architecture, uh, it helps as well because like, you know, architectures are, are bringing together of materials, for example, right? So how does, how did the yeah. designers uh, join this to this thing? So like join wood to metal or join the metal to the glass, for example, like how did it all come together? So looking from this first image here you see the whole composition which is the ultra wide then you go in a little bit more detail and show like um you know the the shapes of the building and the shapes of this the roof and the the glass and the you know the transoms and stuff and then you go in a little bit more detail and you know maybe the architect was trying to frame the the center point tower using one of these <laughs> holes maybe so you're trying to bring out what the thinking behind some of the the design process right yeah um, and then the last thing is just like trying to get some details. So like, how did the materiality come together? So using like those four images, um, I usually would just, uh, select four and then I would go file export. Um, and then for me, the exporting process is already like kind of automatic, I guess, cause I've already done it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so I choose it. I go to a specific folder in my Dropbox called future Instagram. <laughs> um, so it's, I know that it's going to land in there. I don't put it into any subfolders. Um, I just make it hundred percent JPEG quality mm -hmm. and I just leave everything like resolution. I think it only matters when you're going to print it. So it doesn't really matter too much. I don't resize anything. I just leave it the way it is. Um, and I guess, uh, I, I don't know. People say my photos are sharp or in, on Instagram and they get, they, they're not happy with the quality they post sometimes. Mm. But I don't I don't think I'm doing anything special to to export. It could be the 300 um, pixels per inch if they're looking on like a like a 4K monitor or something like that. And you know, because I think because like, other people might be uploading yeah, 72 like DPI or something. But maybe um, a lot of people also uh, like I've seen lots of tutorials online and stuff where they resize it. So yeah. they click here and then they resize it to like the, the width to be 1080, which is what Instagram's width is. Yeah. Um, I, I think it works as well, but like for me, I've just been doing this. I just literally make this a hundred, mm -hmm. uh, set this at 300. It doesn't even matter too much. And then, yeah. And then I export, which is, and that's it. Cool. Um, and um, it's just being four files here, but this is this 
uh, last week. So this is these are like the, the what happened in the carousel. Um, so that's essentially the four images that I just edited, right? Oh, cool. Um, this is one you prepared. And then, yeah. And then I actually did one more where um, I like to do a swipe one. So like this one joins. And then it shows like a, a landscape image, for example. Okay, cool. So this kind of shows a little bit more detail as well. Um, and I can show you quickly as well how to do this. Um, cool. So for example, so I'm just going to, let's say, import in another photo. So I'll let, I'll let you and chat know we've got about 15 minutes left. Sure. Cool, cool. And hey, uh, Benjamin Lee's in the chat. Hello, Ben. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Ben. <laughs> So I'm just going to uh, import in another photo that I took at the location. So how many photos will you take in, in total, do you think? I mean, so this is like lots. all the photos I took. Yeah. So this is all the photos I took in, in one spot, right? Like yeah. if you're working with uh, models, sometimes you take a lot more because you want to get their uh, body positioning and like their, you know, like their pose better or right. their face or whatever, right? Like, so usually when you're shooting models and people, it, you, you tend to shoot a, little, a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but like, see here, like I, to get the framing of the center point, I took five photos here. So I started with this, I started with this one and then I kept shooting a little bit more and then I got to this one, which is the one we just edited. Nice. Um, and so like, yeah, to get this uh, detailed shot, I took six photos. So it's like not too much, I don't think. Um, but yeah, so I think let's just, let's just go with like this one, for example, to get the, to get the landscape image. Okay, cool. So this is like, if you were doing a carousel where you, you've got like a, basically you're grabbing a landscape image and you're putting it, or yeah, landscape, uh, um, yeah. so that when you're sliding across, it looks like you're just sliding one image. So it's kind of using that like user interface as you know, yep. make it feel like you're kind of sliding across. So you just want to, um, first of all, I'm going to paste it again, like before. Um, yeah, so actually I'm going to paste the one we did from the second image because it's more similar to it in terms of style. Copy this one, copy that, and then paste it to the one we just imported. That's not bad. I think the oranges, oh. Yeah, I want to push the yellow more towards the orange side. And then I want to rotate it. So I'm going to transform and then rotate right, for example. So that's the, the landscape image that we're going to be using. Cool. Um, and then we're going to crop it. And in terms of crop, because it's Instagram is 4 by 5 you want to just double it so it becomes uh, ten, like uh, 10? 8 by 5 8 by 5 so it's the oh, same thing five. here yeah, it's because it's the same height. Yeah, math is hard. <laughs> it's already a, <laughs> it's already a preset on Lightroom. It's sixteen by ten. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, so then you just crop it to a composition you like, which I think that's kind of good. Um, and then, oh, maybe I'll edit it a bit more because the highlights are a bit too blown out. So bring back the buildings in the background there. And again, you can also do the reference view as well, just to like check if you're going to be editing it close or not to the other ones. Um, but yeah, so like that, and then I would uh, export this one. So export with previous because we already did the one before. Um, then I'm going to go to the folder that it's in. Let me just open, where is it? My future Instagram folder. Uh, sort by date created. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. So this is like your drafts folder as well? Like I guess you... it's just a, yeah, it's just a folder where I just dump a bunch of all my like completed edits basically i gotta say um, this is um this is fairly risky um during a stream just because of the huge <laughs> sizes of the images and like all the syncing we're doing i realized uh, <laughs> i realized that before i'm like oh yeah just 300 dpi throw it up no worries like but then like it, we dipped a little bit <laughs> but it's, i'm sure it's fine once it syncs it's um, so, yeah so here's the image right so i'm gonna right click it 
Okay. Wait, wait a minute. And then we're going to open it in Photoshop. So that's how I usually, um, you can probably do it in Lightroom as well, but I find that I think it's probably, like for me, it's easier to do in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, slowing down a bit. Okay. So maybe my computer's getting slow. It's because we're open weird. It's because we're streaming. Is it because we're streaming? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's try. It's a, it's a good test for Thursday to see yeah, if um, Photoshop's gonna behave or not. <laughs> I think it's good for us. To just, we'll we'll have everything open. I think for um, for Thursday because yeah. yeah, we're showing off like this full ecosystem, like getting everything to sync, like collectively sharing everything. But also <laughs> we're like streaming out your stream, like bringing in your camera and the microphone, and then everything's getting streamed out to YouTube and the hand. So there's 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 a lot going on. Um, while we're waiting for that to jump up, have a question. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think working with architecture has informed the way you shoot buildings? Like working in an architecture office and like, I guess, going through universe, I think is the question, right? Like, yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, it's helped me a lot in terms of like composition and what I find like I think in, in architecture school, it really do like presentation skills and composition and grid lines and, um, and, and I think it all helps within photography because photography is just like mm. composition pretty much, right? Like finding the right angles and all, all that kind of stuff. I think it, architecture also has helped me kind of think outside the box a little bit, like, uh, how, why, and, and question things and be more curious with mm. like, um, my photography because you know, we always question things like in, in architecture, like why does this need to, why are we using this material? Why does the right. space need to be this big? Or why are we, uh, why is this room going to be next to this room? Or like, you know what I mean? Like it's, mm. it's always a question and makes you curious and like, um, yeah. So that kind of informs a lot. And also, I mean, there's more obvious ones where it's like, you know, I look for symmetry. I look for lines. Um, mm. I like to straighten my lines. I um, always try to put a human in my photos because um, it gives a, a sense of scale and relat relatability. That's something I learned in architecture. Yeah. Um, because when you're designing something and you're rendering an image, for example, a, a fake building, right? Like you always want to put a person in there just to give it a scale and see how like you would position yourself in there. Like, yeah. so that's always what we like to do um, mm. in, in architecture. That's nice. Um, ben, uh, ben Lee thinks that um, the, the main thing is that, you know, a lot of random nerdy facts about buildings. Um, <laughs> I do. Like, like, hey, this building should have balconies because it's required by the regulations. <laughs> I have that saying. I have a, I have a build. I have a friend um, who's um, drafts person, and he he can't help it. He'll walk into a room and be like, "That's that's not right. That's not straight. Yeah. That, should, that shouldn't be like that." Um, this stair yeah, is too parties. high. Like the, the the tread of the stair is like this shouldn't be this high. You know, like yeah, yep. That's me. Yeah, I get it. Fun um, parties. But there's also like fun facts, like how the the Sydney Opera House is not like there's two buildings, right? Right. Um, there's, there's two wings of the Sydney Opera House and it's not parallel to each other and it's like on mm. an angle. So it's like this. Yeah. Um, and so that's because the architect wanted different like light reflections to bounce off from the sun. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at it wow. from far away, there's like going to be a darker one and a lighter one. So it gives more um, layer and depth to the Opera House. Wow. That's cool. I yeah. like that. I didn't, I didn't know that one. What's the one? And like, how many sales? How many sales are on the Sydney Opera House? Do you know that off the top of your head? That's the. Ooh, I think it's including the two little ones at the front. I think it's ten. Yeah, I feel like I it's that. I feel, it's always more than yeah. I can remember. I can't actually remember. So <laughs> this is terrible trivia. Um, yeah. because I haven't researched. <laughs> then, I don't know why it's not opening. Um, the first, yeah. Anyways, but um, and also they use matte and shiny tiles on the Sydney Opera House. So that I again, thought that all, like, I thought they were all shiny. Yeah. yeah okay. No, nah, so there's like a mixture of matte and shiny, so that mm. again it gives different reflection patterns and stuff when you're when the sun hits it. Oh, cool. So yeah, it's a a lot of um, interesting facts about the Opera House actually that I learned at university. I like that a lot. You yeah. just give me an idea to do like 
you know, quick rapid fire questions at the end of um, streams as well, which yeah. is quite fun. Um, Ask because, the random questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just have to make sure I know the answers before I start asking. Um, because it's taking a while and we've only got five minutes to go, I think we'll leave that for our next stream, which is on Thursday. Yeah. We can kind of but jump I mean, in. Essentially, right? Like it's just you open the image in Photoshop, set your crop to four by five, and then crop the left side and then yeah. export it, crop the right side, export it, and then that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. I didn't know this was going to take this long to open Photoshop. That's right. Yeah. Like I said, well, we're, we're well, asking well, a lot. Well, yeah. Um, if anybody has any questions, we do have like yeah five minutes left. So so throw them into throw them into chat. Um, do you want to give us a um, sn like a sneak peek at what we'll be doing on Thursday while we wait for a question or two to pop in? Sure. So on Thursday, let me just open up this image if it's going to open now. Um, on Thursday, we're going to be talking about that tram photo that uh, you guys saw and the flyer, which is just opening up now on my computer screen. One second. Where is it? I can show the YouTube tile while we do it. It's just a static image, but check it out. What you can see now on the screen um, without yeah. all of the, the demo stuff and the app and everything in front of it. Um, so, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so essentially, it, that's a photo I took on my phone, which is also another JPEG image. Um, I'm going to bring that into Lightroom Mobile and again, color grade it in Lightroom Mobile. Mm -hmm. oh, where did I go? Hey, I lost your webcam. <laughs> yeah, where did I go? What happened? What happened? I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on. Huh. It's I'm gone. You're gone. What is going on? Um, anyways, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, at least it happened at the end of the stream, you guys. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if my face was a giant W the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so next week, we're, I mean, you're basically talking about the kind of ecosystem, right? Between like three different, three different apps, bringing yes. them from one to the other, to the other. Um, yeah. you know, so I'm going to be editing them on Lightroom mobile and then, um, Lightroom Mobile, and then because Lightroom Mobile is connected to the cloud, it syncs to Lightroom on the computer, so it'll pick it up there. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then uh, I'll take it into Photoshop. Hopefully, there's no technical issues after that. <laughs> and then uh, we'll we'll do some uh, motion blur and try to do a creative edit with it. Okay, that sounds that sounds awesome. All right, well, because and I wish I, I wish I could wave and say bye, but I, I'm just a black screen at the moment. <laughs> I'll wave twice for you. Um, thank you so much. For, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and uh, I'm glad that all the issues happened right at the end of the stream. We'll have them sorted out before Thursday. Um, so yeah, so we'll be we'll be back on Thursday. I, th I think we're 10:30 on Thursday. We'll double check. Um, but yeah, so we're back on Thursday. Um, thank you all for joining us, um, and we will see you next time. Bye. Yes. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Thomas. Bye. Bye.